Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about two movies, Shin Godzilla and Godzilla Minus One. So one made me watch the other one, get it, Minus One, again. So I had to watch Shin Godzilla again. I thought I'd talk about them both because I'm a little up and down and, you know, I got a lot to say about the Shin Godzilla because I felt I was hyped up. Again, I say, you know, I'm born in 71. Godzilla is one of my favorites. King Kong, all the kaiju, whatever you want to call them. Mothra, Rodan, uh, even the creature from the fathoms. Like, what was the guy's name? Harry Horsen, stop animation guy. I watched them all and I'm a big fan of them. And I've watched everything that Godzilla's probably ever been in. And some of those movies, you know, can't be corny, kitty, whatever you want to call them. So, I hear great reviews, rave things, but I don't go too deep dive because uh, I don't want to spoil it. Wait for them in the right mindset. And the holiday seasons, for me, are usually the Godzilla um, superhero movies and stuff like that. And I got to watch it. So, I watched, when I originally watched Shin Godzilla, I was kind of shocked in the beginning because... It was doing odd camera things to me, weird dialogue and setups, and then when they showed a monster, I thought this is the silliest, one of the dumbest looking things for this day and age. Now, I've seen Godzilla put his tail between his legs, blow his atomic breath, and fly backwards through the air. Okay? I've seen him do kung fu, uh, you know, hand signals. He's done some crazy stuff, talking with animals, and when they went kitty. There's some great content on YouTube for deep dives on Godzilla movies. But anyway, well, here comes this thing crawling, wiggling through the, you know, to get on land. And it just looks horrendous. It looks like, you know, some prop guys put the, you know, the, when they do the parades and they go through the streets like a dragon or something. It looked really bad in the eyes. It just shocked me. Like, what am I fucking watching? But I'm okay. Like I can get back into you know being a kid and watching some bad Godzilla movies. You see the the lines that are suspended from the air and some bad effects. Some really uh, too much attention to being kid like and campy. But it just shocked me because of all you know I heard and how amazing this movie was going to be. So for most of the movie, everything's bothering me: the camera, the music. The you know characters that are getting fucking crazy with all this you know repeating of things like I get it, but when the guys you know you pick up the phone, you say something, you say something to the person next to you, that person's got to shout it out to the next person. Like it just starts annoying me. And yeah, granted, it's because I'm such a big fan of Godzilla. I want to geek out and watch Godzilla, and I don't mind the Godzilla type. So if he's gonna be Godzilla, good guy, can't be kid Godzilla. I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll, I'm down for it. But I wasn't expecting it. It looks really dopey and silly and cheesy. The things aren't working for me with how the story's moving forward. Some great actors and things like that. And again, um, I'm, I want to have fun and geek out on my Godzilla through the holiday seasons. I, I do think though that sometimes subtitle movies watching and reading the subtitles is better so i did that for the uh both movies sometimes i might get annoyed with the dubs but i'll go for the dubs on rewatches in that sense so putting that aside i'm, I'm paying attention i'm reading there's this silly looking godzilla i'm not liking the build up the cameras like things are starting to annoy me in the movie and then they get this evolution of Godzilla, so, I don't know, apparently, cause I'll, I, I want to connect this to Godzilla Minus One, but I know it's not, but this is kind of why I did this, even when I was making the thumbnail for this. Um, so he evolves and becomes more like the Godzilla we know. And this happens over a short period of time, technically. Um, but it doesn't feel as riveting as I think it should be. Now, for some people, it might. But, again, I'm at a point where I'm 
kind of annoyed with how silly he looks, the way he's looking on camera, the way they keep cutting to things and people repeating lines, and I'm repeating myself just to. So yeah, I don't know. And on my rewatch, I still found that I thought it was ridiculous, but I kind of got through it more. And this might be because of how good Godzilla minus one is. Like it actually kind of redeems Shin Godzilla. Although, oh yes, okay, they're not connected. And I'm looking at the directors, so, you know, the director of uh, Shin Godzilla, um, Hideki Anno and Shinji Higuchi, it's not the same as Godzilla Minus One, which I'll get to, but I think that's a new guy, Takashi Yamazaki. Yeah, and uh, um, so Shin Godzilla, and he gets evolved, and shit starts to get real, because he starts looking pretty terrifying, and you're like, oh shit. And on the rewatch, so yeah, things blended a little better in the sense of how they got to where they were by the midpoint of the movie or the evolution. So it probably was the just the shock of it all, the hype I was built up on. And it's an okay movie. I still don't like I don't rave about it. I won't tell my friends you have to watch it except for the goofy fucking scene where he's oogling around on the floor, his eyes are like that and it just looks to me terrible. However, again, I'm, I'm there for it. You got a low budget. It's a work of a work of art, a of, of labor of love. You want to bring life to Godzilla, and you get to the evolution of him, and he looks terrifying. A little awkward looking, but I'll admit what they went for and the music. Again, on second watch, some of the things didn't bother me so much, and actually helped a little bit more. You still got these dialogue scenes that should highlight some of these great actors and stuff, but it feels thin. It feels a little too bloated for no reason. Again, if you want to repeat things and, and things like that, but it shows the you know, it, it's coming through what's going on and how they start figuring out um, Godzilla's blood's like a coolant system and he needs um, time to redo his breath. So by this time, all right, so he's doing this evolution. He's starting to look terrifying. And they do something, even on my rewatch, that makes me roll my eyes and I get annoyed. And maybe I shouldn't be, but... So Godzilla's getting evolved. He looks terrifying. Getting ready to use his breath. They do a cool scene. Even camera pans and pulls. It just looks devastating and epic. Then they decide <laughs> to have his dorsal, his fin, cro bone things, whatever they are on his back, shoot out atomic lasers in like a laser light show. And, and they start blowing up airplanes and stuff. And this thought happened to me. It happens a lot. I keep saying in my head, fuck you. So I'm going, fuck you. Fuck you. I don't care. Like, I don't want to see this. Um, I'm tossing. I'm getting tossed between a campy-looking Godzilla. It's silly, but a serious tone. What Dane Angus is? What are the stakes? What's the theme here? Godzilla is evolving. He's terrifying. And then you want to do this fucking light show? What to show this Godzilla could do something totally different? Or it's not that they haven't done things like that, but it just didn't work for me. I want the fucking. I don't want to see it. I, so, even on my rewatch, we're giving it, uh, you know, a better uh, reception. I'm not too hyped on Shin Godzilla, and I get how they work together. They figure out he needs to recharge. Uh, again, this scenes in here in this movie are epic. He truly looks terrifying at times. The devastation he causes is, you know, you can feel it. It's heartbreaking, like what's going on. Yet, they pulled me out of the fucking movie and makes me, makes my eyes roll back and I go, in my head I'm going, does this happen, what other movie, what was I watching, I kept going, oh, it was like Blue Beetle, I think. <laughs> I'll, do a, I'll do a podcast on that movie. Holy shit, but, and, and I don't want to see that, I didn't want to see it here, I don't know why, maybe it is something you could explain to me, yet. oh no, a mutated shark fish from the... 
oceans could actually develop that and they were like, okay maybe you want to i don't but i didn't want to see it happen I, it just felt like you really pulled me out of the movie you shocked me again and even on my rewatches where i'm having a better time watching it and getting through it it doesn't work for me at all i don't i don't care if, I, I, again the scenes around and what's going on with the blast and his his the way his atomic breath is working are epic and just surreal. They're just amazing. Even with the music now, like, you know, I'm still not hyped on the music totally. But again, on my rewatch, because of minus one, I'm giving it a shot. And he, re, he has to recharge and they put this coagulant in, in him. It just kind of looks a little too unbelievable for me, but... I'm granted it's, uh, you know, they're trying, they're making a, look, that first fucking Godzilla American one with Matthew Broderick was a wreck. The next one, I thought it was a fucking bullshit movie where they keep cutting the scenes as the kid from Kick-Ass is in it, so I'm not a fan of that either in that sense. It looks great, there's some great scenes, some great cutting out of sound, and, you know, they, uh, I'll give King Kong, you know, Godzilla and... Godzilla King of the Monsters, more of a benefit. I enjoy those as a crazy romp. But again, you fuck around with people and families, and you don't you don't do it right. The, the formula doesn't work. And this formula, which they've done in the past, you know, the Japanese versions, then you've got, you know, this military council type uh, chain of hierarchy, and you've got to figure out what to do, and there's this influence of what's going on around them other nations, that type thing, and they've got to get the job done and stop Godzilla, nuclear, they're going to blast uh, Japan, whatever, and drop the bomb, and then they have a deadline, they make their deadline, Godzilla is technically frozen, and looking back again, it's my re, because I think I've watched this now four times, I it did the English dub, but I went back again, I, I made sure I read the subtitles again, I'm not a big fan of Shin Godzilla. I'll take some artistic, creative awesomeness that's in this movie, but I can say that about some of the best and more superhero movies and movies that I'm really into, like even uh, Pacific Rim, or I think Cloverfield's, um, you know, trying of the camera POV type thing. It's, you know, all those type, you're mixing genres and you're trying to create new uh, ways to get people sucked into the action and the camera pans and zoom ins. Uh, this movie was a little, um, I don't know, a, a little too jarring for me and not put together uh, in a way that even on rewatches, I'm so hyped and sucked into. This is a movie you watch again and you fast forward. I'll even fast forward to the goofy crawling around fucking snake version and then when he's like belly flopping everywhere and his little his little hand claws start coming out to the evolved form and it starts looking terrifying and you know even the um stupid laser homing fucking light show off his back to the you know even some of the acting and some of the stakes and some of the points in the movie are pretty good and but it's definitely one of those you, you can fast forward, take chunks out of the movie. And that's where I land with Shin Godzilla these days. Uh, I don't super recommend it. Um, I, I'm going to say I still have a love for it in, in, a, in a way. I can appreciate, like I talk about me liking Green Lantern or whatever. But I can appreciate what they tried to do, how it was executed, you know, budget and time. Or, you know, the plot and what they're trying to... But I just felt the decisions weren't jarring with me here and there. And the overall experience, I mean, as a Godzilla fan, is be watching it, but I'm going to fast forward and hit chunks out of the movie. I still roll my eyes here and there. But then we get to the Godzilla minus one portion of this, and I got to admit... I'm fucking, red flags are everywhere, I don't care about the fucking hype, stop hyping these movies, because, again, even when I'm rewatching it, the hype for Shin Godzilla is bullshit, in my opinion, uh, I, I, that I don't understand, I understand, you know, some critical acclaim, and 
with the, you know all that stuff, but not the hype train that went on for so long with Shin Godzilla. So I'm not paying attention to it. I don't care. I start watching Godzilla minus one, and right away you can just tell different director, like I mentioned before. I don't mind solid stories with a family because this is how you do it right i'm reading uh subtitles and i care about people you get right into it the uh kamikaze pilot because it takes place in like 1945 which is i'll get to how i thought they would connect and they uh, they might they might not i don't know if this in shin godzilla but he lands his plane. It's a stop. Pl- it's a stop. It's like the last stop point where Kamikaze pilots will get their planes fixed before they do their deed. And the movie gets into it where he's um, he can't go through with it. <clears throat> he doesn't. He can't become. He can't kill himself and whatever. And that's starts the movie. But then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, what's going on? Ah, the fucking Americans. Like someone's coming. And then this. All right, well, I don't know. Let's say T Rex size Godzilla shows up. It just fucks everybody up. And I'm like, okay. And they do something which annoyed me, but in a good way, where they've got the character, and he's like, oh, so one of the other characters, they're all like mechanics to, to fix the planes. And he's like, you're all gonna, your planes, they go shoot them with the music. What if it pisses them off? But it shows the character and like the coward he is. When he gets to his plane, he can't shoot Godzilla or whatever form it's in. Like I said, it's still, you know, it's like, you know, T-Rex size in that, in that area. He doesn't shoot it. Everybody's killed except for one guy in him because he's, like, knocked unconscious. He wakes up. Godzilla gets away, and this guy is fucking pissed at him. He hates him, and I hate him. And I'm like... Okay, it's what ten minutes into the movie. I I I care about the situation. You got me invested because I'm pissed now. This guy's a fucking idiot. I don't care for twenty millimeter guns. It's a fucking T Rex looking thing. Granted, okay, you know maybe what you know later in hindsight, it might seem like it might piss him off because he'll fucking regenerate. But I don't know if he's exposed to the you know bombs and stuff yet. But okay. He comes back to his home, and already, this fucking lady hates him. You know, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be a kamikaze pilot. They've already got a theme in here. The setting is in the past. I don't care. Because normally I'll be like, oh, how does this connect to, you know, Shen Godzilla? Where am I putting this in the time frame? And it didn't bother me. I went right along with it. Reading subtitles. This guy is an asshole coward. But he's got, you know, something in him, and he comes back, and this fucking lady hates him. Punch, and then there's some chick in his house. And, no, some chick hands him a baby. She runs. I don't see. Here's something about the culture. So you got to imagine the time, 1945. Because um, I don't know. She's a wife, not wife, girlfriend, not girlfriend, haul it, not haul it. But this woman hands him a baby. She runs away. Like, I don't know why they were actually after her. Maybe they want to put her in a foster. Whatever. But you find out this girl is not even the mother of the child. That the mother died because the bombings. Which the character's uh, family died too. It's like a devastated area. So she's taking care of the baby. The, she, she promised the dying mother she would take care of it. Again, you see how like I'm talking about it? Like This would seem like the biggest fuck you, I would say, to the American movies. Because... Millie Bobby Brown, or the first guy from his girlfriend and the kid. They did it all wrong. I cared right from the beginning. I'm like, oh, what the fuck is going on? This is bullshit. This fucking guy, you should have shot the guns. You now all those people have died. This guy is right. You got this woman, you know, a saint who fucking promises a dying mother to take care of the kid. They're chasing her for some fucking reason. He holds on to the baby. She's like, oh, why did you leave the baby? He's like, I can't leave the baby here. Yeah? She saw, winds up staying in his house. And this is a Godzilla movie. <laughs> a Godzilla movie. Holy shit for, like, good writing and 
making you care, and I'm reading subtitles. See, I don't know, this is a big, I, I can imagine sitting in Brooklyn, New York, born in 1971, whatever, that there aren't, like, friends around, except for a couple, like, oh, I watched the movie, you know, I watched the subtitles. This is, you know, something that is, uh, you put your brain to, you're reading the subtitles, you, you, you're trying to see what's going on, and you care, and it's refreshing. I'm watching a Godzilla movie, Godzilla's not even in it. I'm annoyed at this fucking guy, and that a whole situation's going on. And then, he's got to get a job, and he gets a job, and it all has to connect. And there is an annoying part in this movie. I'm going to, I'll talk about it, but there's a fucking annoying part in the movie. But, with all the goodness, it doesn't really matter. So, him and the girl have a relationship, you know, he's trying to be nice to her, and he's shocked that she's staying, so whatever, he's got to get a job. And these uh, minesweeper jobs, where they get on these boats, and they go out, and it was... And because of the war, all well, there was just mines have to get out of the ocean. So he takes the job, and even the little subtleties with, but she's like, "What the fuck are you doing? You're risking your life." He's like, "Well, these boat, these boats, are especially made to take out the mines. You know that's what they're for. And the risk is, well, it's dangerous, but I'll have the money. We got to feed the baby, or whatever. So you got so many subtleties and nuances. So like he's already accepted them." There's something going on between them, but he's got this battle he has to finish in his mind because he's a fucking coward asshole, and he's gonna go out and take a dangerous job. <laughs> and that is subtitles. The actress is great. The actor's good. Everything around it's working. I don't care. There's no Godzilla. So he shows up at the boat, and he's like, "That's a special boat," and it's just old rickety boat with like a gun mounted to the top, and it's made of wood. And the guy. The scientist guy sort of he used to make weapons or something in the war. He's like, oh yeah, the mines are magnetic, uh, knowing the dangerous ones or something, and so we use a wooden boat. So you get it? It's like specially made. Little fucking things, caring about the fucking guy in a bad way, in a good way. The family, the wife slash girlfriend slash harlot slash saint. The little baby, the, the friend network he's got going on after now he starts working with the minefield. So he gets the um gets out on the boat, they do their thing, and the guy shows them oh, what they do is they, they surface up the mines and then they use the gun from a distance to blow them up. How this is better, whatever I get I don't know, but I'm 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 with it. And the guy can't blow it up. And our character here, um, because the fucking all right. So the fucking names, all right, I can't do it, all right? I, you know, sometimes I'll go through and I'll say, yeah, the director, which I did, but I can't go through Runusuki Kamiki, Minami Hanaba B, Yuki Yamada. Um, just, you know, the main characters. Is, he's a gunner, so he shoots and he blows it up and the camaraderie starts on the on the boat. And, again, I'm watching a Godzilla movie, and I'm not worried where Godzilla is. I haven't thought about it. I'm, I'm connected, invested. I'm a little annoyed, but like I said, in, in a good way. This character, and I'm not saying you should be a Kamikaze pilot or whatever, or that he did something wrong. But once you've done that, and you say, oh, I can't do it, you land on this island, and you fake that your plane's in trouble and the mechanic even says to you look uh, there's nothing wrong with your plane you know and he, they kind of have a little talk about him you know i don't think he was like you're a cow he was like look it's really not worth throwing your life over especially where things are at like you know we're losing or whatever but when he's asked to go to his gunner ship he's the only one there he's got the the he runs to the ship and he's got the guns trained on godzilla and doesn't shoot that's where you know, I saw it. But, again, in a good way. They're on this fucking mining boat. And they get this fish start floating out. Um, again, there's connected drama with the neighbor next door lady who hated him in the beginning. And she, she's asking questions like, oh, is that the mother's kid? She lactate? Can you feed the baby? Oh, she's not the mother. And 
you start getting the idea of how uncomfortable it is for a time like this when even his uh, crewmates come over and they're talking and they find out that it's not his wife and she's not a girlfriend or whatever. And it's so awkward and it shows how fucking PTSD this guy is. Is there, and these elements are in the movie where he freaks out when she's wakes him up in the middle of the night or he gets woken up from a bad dream. And he's trying to go through life and, you know, do what he's got to do, put everything behind him. And he's got, like, pictures of the people who, the surviving families that they were trying to get back to. There's these underlying themes that are in there. And again, I don't care. I'm enjoying it. Holy shit. Never what I thought I'd care about a guy, a little baby kid, his girlfriend. And I've watched these blockbuster movies that cost so much more money. It's not funny. You can make a quiet movie with great acting, riveting story, and have fucking Godzilla in it. So, he goes back out, and whatever, and you get this hint, or it's, it's shown that they're aware of something. There's like a montage thing, and a real video, and beep beeps, and all fucking sonar shit. They notice something big in the ocean, and it's coming around, and... They want these minesweepers to do, like, part of their job or whatever. And it's like, it is great because everybody's like, what the fuck are we doing on this thing? And when they get to this, um, I don't know, let's just call it a destroyer-type warship, and it's clearly fucked up. Uh, our character, uh, Shishima, Shishima, I don't see, I don't want to say his fucking name. Shikishima is like, fuck. This thing has got, it's the same creature, oh my god, it's got to be even bigger now. And the same fish stop floating up on the ocean. And he's like, call it in, Godzilla's coming, Godzilla's coming. Look, you want to do Godzilla right, you want to have a fucking stupid story, you better do it right. I mean, because you look back at the, some of the, like to say the first 2014 American one, with the kick-ass guy and his family. All that action seemed contrived and bullshit. The angles cutting away. The nighttime. This this Godzilla shows up. It's awesome. Even if you want to pick apart um, some special effects here and there, fucking Godzilla looks menacing. It works on so many levels. Again, because you're not you're invested in the character and this fucking family and the lady who hates him and his crew members and there's so many subtleties to everything that's going on he's got to confront the Godzilla again he's got another shot and they come up with this uh oh so they so apparently some minds they keep um some they might shoot maybe they're too dangerous to get close to but they have minds on the ship I guess they're you know collecting him and getting him out of the ocean so they decide to use that. They put him on in Godzilla's path. And him chasing the boat scene is pretty dope. Again, this guy um, clearly influences for like Jaws and um, even some of the other Godzilla movies. It looks great. You're like, holy shit, what's going on? And the explosion does nothing to him. Then the guy's like, oh, what about in his mouth? And well, okay, well, look, we can end this movie really fucking soon. Let's, it bounces around the ocean. This mine goes into his mouth but they can't detonate it here we go call back the guy gets on the gunner the scheming and he fucking shoots it and blows it off big side of his face is blown off but his face regenerates and he just goes back away and you're like holy shit this is fucked up and then unlike the other movie where the elements of the government and what they were going to do just kind of muddy the water became like too much background noise and shit was going on again repeated and we got camera angles this one the guy's like we're fucked <laughs> americans can't come because of the russians we know there's this big creature now we got to pull together you know citizens like people who well, whoever have we have left and we got to get shitty boats and shitty everything 
and come up with a plan because this thing's going to keep coming back. I'm not sure if it was like mentioned, like, oh, it's just territory now. It'll keep coming back. It comes on land and you just fuck shit up. It's atomic breath. Everything. This is Godzilla looking like he should. And I, I do like the American one, the recent ones. Um, King Kong vs. Godzilla, Godzilla King of Monsters. But this is great. And you know, there's like a little council meeting and everybody's pissed at what's going on. Uh, and our main character, Shishkimi, decides, oh, I got to get that guy who survived who fucking hates me to fix this airplane because what I'm really going to do is get it, fulfill my role, kamikaze into Godzilla's mouth. Well... He writes shitty letters or something to piss the guy off, and the guy just beats the shit out of him and <laughs> uh, ties him up. And he's like, oh, I, I knew you were going to fucking get mad and come get me. And although I wanted to roll my eyes and say, fuck you, I laughed, and I can't, like, cause I can't, it's good writing. I cared about that character. He survived. This guy's a jerk off. You, you would, okay, I understand when he told you, go to your plane in the beginning, and shoot Godzilla with the guns, you were afraid. But when you ran there and he put, you made it there, you were in the fucking cockpit with the guns ready. But this is the one guy that survived. He's the mechanic. He's the only one who can fix the ship because they can't get nobody. And he joins and he accepts it. They got this really cool plane, special thing only a certain amount were made. It can do what it's got to do, but he's got to have it special because he's going to put explosives in the plane have it rigged and there's the drama and nuance with him and his girlfriend slash wife slash holler slash mother slash not mother and he knows he's gonna go and he's not coming back this is the stop godzilla again this is also with another plan laid on top of the government with how they're gonna defeat godzilla so the scientist guys are go we got these free aren't they small Encircle him when he rises out of the water. We'll sink him really quick. And that should kill him because nothing could survive that big. Going down that deep. And even people will debate the uh, science. And this is not like Avengers office or, you know, clear office space they're using for their governments and stuff. Not that I give Shin Godzilla too much shit for that. But a lot of, you know, where laptops are open everywhere. These are like real people, you know, real clothing. Like, it just feels... And then you do set to see the separation between a military guy, you know, and like a city guy. But anyway, they're going to sink him, and then the failsafe plan is if that doesn't kill him, we're going to inflate it and rise him back up, and this should fuck him up and kill him. So most people doubt it. People are getting on board. It's what we got to do. It's only us. You give a shit. You care. And I'm like, wow. Let's get fucking Godzilla going. And if you're going to make him like the villain Godzilla, because it's like no monster is going to pop up. And like you know that immediately, even with the other movie. No monster is going to pop up. He's going to have to team up or do anything like that. And again, his atomic weapon did a little differently. So it shoots a beam, but then has an explosion at the end. I loved it. And I was like, please don't have the laser show up his back. I don't remember them doing it. Maybe I shut it out, but it didn't happen. But he looked terrifying, devastating. He fucks up their plan, and then the kamikaze pilot draws him out to the zone where they're ready. The ships have to go around him in a circle, so these cables kind of get closer. So the, the things that are going to sink him and or raise him are at least in the, in the vicinity around him, so it creates that foam bubble thing. But it's not going to be easy. It's just Godzilla movie with real life people feeling like a real life situation. You care about them. The writing's good. And they're fighting Godzilla. I don't need extra monsters. And I do, I do love it. Like if I'm going to get it, I'll, I'll love it. And I'll, I'll enjoy it. But again, like where Shane Godzilla didn't do it for me, this one does it. It, it, does it have little legs of time in here? Yeah, sure, but we can see Godzilla, but it has good writing. It has a good story I'm invested in. The little babies growing up. The f oh, all right, so let's get to this. I almost skipped it. 
So the wife slash girlfriend slash harlot slash mother slash not mother is... They, this is the only setup that is bullshit in the movie, and it feels like they did this in even the American ones, where they set up situations that involve a certain person. So she's getting into the city. She's going to start working. She gets on the train, and what do you know? When Godzilla comes to land, he that's the train he bites. So I'm like, oh, shit. Then they got to do this fucking action stunt thing. He's, Godzilla's got to train his mouth. And she's dangling out. Okay, so that type of thing, like, it can annoy me, especially in a movie that's shitty with bad writing and characters who may be good actors, but you don't care about them. But, you know, I want, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So it goes over the ocean. I'm like, yes, she falls out in the ocean. I'm like, well, okay, well, that wasn't so bad, right? Just how many places could Godzilla go? He likes trains. Fine. Then. They're doing this shit, and Godzilla's going through the streets, and you know he's fucking scary. It's, it's done so well. There you, there you see her soaking wet, shocked and in trauma. Fine, walking through the streets, and Godzilla's like right behind her. Shit hitting the fan. She gets pushed to the ground. Jashumi shows up. Her husband, not husband, boyfriend, not boyfriend. Kamikaze, not kamikaze pilot, and. Saves her and they start walking through the streets or running because Godzilla's fucking everything up. His tail, his breath, things are whipping up and explosions are going off because the fucking army's attacking. So here comes this shit storm of soon. It looks like the Neo in the Matrix. He's pulling all the shit with him and his car's full. It starts coming towards him. She pushes our main guy into an alleyway. And she gets caught in a blast, and boom, it's over. And I'm like, oh my god, this is fucking more... Like, you had to set it up, you had to set it up in the train, and you had to set it up in the fucking street. He comes and saves her, but no, she saves him. Because this thing is death, and it just sweeps everybody away. <laughs> so, here's what I love, though. It's at this point of the movie... Again, I'm not taking points, so I wasn't... Uh, even adding that little contrive, you know, adding, oh, we're going to put that bullshit with her in the train. I said to myself, you know what? If these people are smart, she's going to be alive at the end. And what happened is, she's, he's going to be in the plane getting ready to kamikaze it, and they're going to radio him. She's alive. I thought, oh, that would be a great way to get him out of being a kamikaze pilot. So my brain was like, okay. He did something I didn't like because I cared about this chick. She's a fucking saint. And she's nice and she's trying to help all throughout the movie. And you're like, fuck, she, she fucking saved him. And she died. So now he's really going to do what he's fucking said. He's going to blow this fucking Godzilla up. So that's the only nitpick of the movie, really. Where they have to set it up where she's on the train. And she, get, you know, she has to do this thing where she falls and grabs on. She's holding, and she jumps into the water. And, you know, okay, then she's in the street, so... But, again, you care about the character. You you, you want to see, you know, her sprout her angel wings and save everybody. Like, or maybe come off or whatever the fuck. And so she's dead. He's fucking kamikaze that He's ready. The guy tells him what to do. You pull this lever. The bomb is good. You're good to go. Godzilla's here. Fucks up their plan, and then he's got to lure him out to the zone. They get to the zone. The boats are going around doing their thing. And then they hit the switch. And Godzilla, the foam, he goes right to the bottom. Well, maybe not right to the bottom. And they fucking see that he's still struggling. So they're going to raise him up quick. So fuck this internal organs. You know, it is going deep into the ocean, coming back up. But. As they do this, it stops and he starts struggling and they can't, they don't have the man, they don't have the, the manpower, the, the strength in these boats to raise Godzilla fast enough. So here comes a plot I forgot about that was included is the, there's a young guy in this fucking boat crew who gets hurt and they don't, don't allow him to come on this mission. But he brings like 30 tugboats, saves the day, and I was like, 
holy shit, good for that guy who I didn't really know, but I cared about, and I forgot that he was told to stay home. And they raise Godzilla, and he comes up, and he's all fucked up. But, of course, spoilers. These are the main spoilers, and I gotta do it, so. Tsushimi has to finish his arc, and he's got the picture of the girl there. And no, sadly, he does not get a radio call that she's alive, so. And I was wrong. Godzilla's getting ready to fire his breath and he's mad and he looks so fucking evil and dangerous. Where are you supposed to be if you're going to make them like this? And again, I still like the new ones. I like the Godzilla designs. Shin Godzilla, eh, not too much, even in his terrifying form, but... Boom! He hits the, the lever, does his thing, plant hits him right in the mouth, blows his fucking head off. Couple of seconds later, Godzilla starts like beams start coming out of his body. So, spoiler, spoilers. Tsushimi is seen in a parachute as he ejected. Then they do a flashback of the mechanic. And I didn't I give this away, but the mechanic kind of hinted at it before. He's like, oh, I'll show you one more thing. But they cut away. And the one more thing was here's the ejection seat. He's like, no, I'm ready for this. I want to be a kamikaze. He's like, no live so he was gonna live anyway and i guess the little girl uh, what was it um, um akiko or something is worked it he's got to take care of her because the mother's dead and so he's in a parachute godzilla's body kind of breaks apart and falls into the ocean because his beams of his atomic breath i guess when we know where to go from brain signals or out his mouth just starts like piercing him you know and he goes falls into the water but I'm kind of rewarded because as they come off the boat and no one's really being touted hero yet. It's just like Chishuki, whatever the fuck his name is, comes off the boat first. But all the crew and stuff and they're cheering because Godzilla's been destroyed. And the lady who hated him in the beginning, the neighbor who kind of started taking care of him and the woman too, runs up to him with a note. And I was like, yes. And then he opens the note. Runs to the hospital with the baby, and he, the fucking wife slash harlot slash not wife, girlfriend slash not girlfriend, mother slash not mother, is alive with a bandage over her face and her arms in a cast, and he loses his shit, starts crying. I was a little shocked that they didn't give the little girl actress like to run up and hug the mom, but it's a great moment where he's just like, she's like, "Are you? Is your war over?" Holy shit! Good fucking movie! And you fucking saved the girl at the end who should have been dead but isn't dead, which I like and I didn't like and I like it more now. Godzilla minus one! Holy shit! Low budget, can we say? Can I, Am I right even saying that? How do we judge things these days? But I'm not saying even Shin Godzilla was not a labor lover. It wasn't so loved by a certain amount of people and it's got its followers and I get it I will rewatch it again but it's definitely going to be something I fast forward through it's just one of those Godzilla movies like some of the older ones that I want to fast forward to and get through some of the you know stuff that's just a little too much for me I don't think Shin Godzilla is a shitty movie I do think it's overhyped for sure but Godzilla minus one solid all around acting and i had to read it in subtitles the plot the suspense the music the nuance of layers of trauma the time period what the fuck's going on with a woman who's with a child and i'm not worthy i'm a coward i'm of this some of that it's in there and it's friendship going on and even the guy i forgot the young what they call kid it's not like that the, the veteran type guy's like, like i'm not a kid or whatever it's like you're green, you're inexperienced, so kid is what it is, you know, that type of thing. Again, little nuances about the boat, and it's a special boat because it's wood. Him breaking down and fucking losing it, waking up from a nightmare. Uh, this fucking saint wife, girlfriend, um, the, the friendship peeking into it saying, what, she's not your wife? What is and then and calling him out on it like, you know, this is what it should have been. 
Because after she, you know, she died or whatever, the kids cry. It's just, holy shit, did I really care about this stuff? Can I watch a $70 billion American movie with great actresses and great fucking special effects and not care? And on rewatches of those, I got to fast forward to all that shit to see, and I'll admit, an awesome looking Godzilla, awesome looking monsters. Like, it's so stu- Like, I don't want to see King Kong with a fucking weapon. Like, I fucking don't with his fucking axe. And, and, and I had to see that. But I enjoy the movie for what it is. It's a. I enjoy the old one with a fucking horrible looking King Kong in that suit. Oh my god, it's so bad. But I know all the music. I pop my head and smile because, you know, it's, it's my childhood. This is the childhood for a new fucking generation. And if it has to sh- start with Shin Godzilla, I'll explain why I am. <clears throat> I thought it was going to be part of it because after Godzilla falls into the ocean, <clears throat> and he's like I said, he, he started splitting apart because the beams were coming out his back, his arms, or whatever the fuck. And his head, his head was missing because of the fucking explosion. Um, it's like a globule falls into the water and it starts regenerating. And that's how it ends. And I thought, okay, so that globule thing with no legs and just forming is what climbs onto the land in fucking Shin Godzilla. Like, why wouldn't that just make sense and just be the way it is? And this, like I said, different directors, their, their goal was to make more Shin Godzilla movies, but then they didn't, and, you know, pandemics were going on, Americans were making their movie, and, you know, laws, you know, not, not that they're angry at each other, but, you know, when you're going to make a Godzilla movie, you can't impede on the other one type thing, and they decided to do, like, a little reboot with Godzilla Mice, but I don't, I don't have to see this as a reboot, really. I don't care if they say that this is the Godzilla who comes up on land. I mean, with the god-awful, silly, dopey-looking monster that crawls on land and some bad camera angle shots and stuff. I, I, I wouldn't care. However, I really don't mind where they go with it. If you're going to take this level of quality of um, care and put it to... It being Shin Godzilla, and we start where Shin Godzilla ended, where Godzilla's just frozen in the middle of the fucking city, and the world has to live with him there. Like, okay, I'll go with that, because that had a theme on its own. But, doing a little bit of a deep dive, it seems like the Godzilla from Shin Godzilla is a mutated certain shark. And this one clearly is like a prehistoric, I don't know what the fuck it is, like a dinosaur, you know, in 1945. That gets affected by the bombs and whatever. Although you can say the same for the shark thing. I, I don't know. So maybe they would connect it. I don't see why not. Because someone like me who loves all the movies doesn't care and sees it as normal. That at the end of Godzilla Minus One when he has barely no body. And he's just a globule fall, falling in the earth. That he turns into the silly looking shitty monster. Can't be fucking monster days. For a little bit of time, and then turns into a ferocious, evil-looking fucking, you know, smoldering incarnation of fucking destruction. I'm going to give Shin Godzilla that, but there you go. Godzilla is back in a good way. I'm going to give Godzilla King of Monsters, even King Kong vs. Godzilla, they do. Not that first Godzilla, the one that just kept filming at night. Although there's one scene in there where they're flying through the fucking clouds and they cut the sound out and it's all darkness and then it's a fucking epic scene I'll, I'll give it that but no you want to do shitty writing and stuff and compound it with your bullshit that one gets shit on but king of monsters although the shitty family writing garbage with great people and actors is not worth it fast forward it but i'll enjoy it and i'll have fun with it same thing with king kong although i did like king kong's uh, solo movie where they kind of introduced him. I thought that was really good. Uh, again, I don't want to see him with weapons. I don't want to see Godzilla with lasers shooting at his back like a light show. Don't want to see that. Um, 
But if you're going to continue from here, this is it. Godzilla minus one is excellent. It's well, it's it's good. Granted, you know what? I bet there are people out there like you know. I, I didn't want to watch. I want to see a Godzilla romp, and fine. I think you'll agree. Like you know, this is good story, good acting, good fucking pacing, and uh, you can feel elements of other things in it. Cause it, even when I looked online, it, and I was like, oh, you know, he drew inspiration from this or that, and you're like, okay, uh, I can definitely see it. And let's give it to these people. Uh, I wish I could pronounce all their names, but I'm in a good place with Godzilla. Uh, I wish I was in a better place. Like I said, I'm okay with King Kong, but if you're going to put him versus Godzilla and do it good in a smart way, I would definitely not give him a weapon. I fucking, I don't know why I don't like it. And it looks like they're going to do it again. And you know what? I don't know. Maybe it'll grow on me. But if they can keep this level of quality, outstanding performances, uh, a story I cared about, cared about the little fucking kids and the wife, not wife, and the fucking crew on the boat, even poor kid I didn't remember who saves the day, basically. Good for him. Good for everybody on these two movies. And I'm going to give credit to Shin Godzilla. Maybe this wouldn't be made if Shin Godzilla didn't get all the overhype. But fine. I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'll go back and watch my Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla is. And, you know, which is why I kind of love the King Kong vs. Godzilla movie. And you might need a weapon. <laughs> But okay, you know, I don't want to see it too much. I can't say enough good things about Godzilla Minus One. A, a good movie all around. Um, I can see people just accepting, look, I want a Godzilla romp. Uh, I don't know. I guess they could say they didn't like it for that. But I can't see this being nothing but a huge success money-wise. I hope like this, this is a movie that should get hype. It should get a lot of hype rather than Shin Godzilla. But, you know what? Again, good on them. Good on whatever it is, Toho, you know, the people who started this stuff. Although, you could say, you know, the original King Kong, 1930-something. Um, maybe Harry Horsen has something to say about this. And there you go. I wanted to do two movies, because like I said, one just made me rewatch Shin Godzilla again for like the fifth time. I'm a little stunned at that movie. Um, well, the hype it got, and here I am, you know, giving it a little bit more praise. I'll admit that. Uh, I wouldn't shit on the movie in the, in the sense of, oh, um, you did so much that you made the experience bad. <laughs> I mean, you know, after the first viewing, I would say so because I, I was just like, this is bullshit. It's overhyped. Blah 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 laser light show, goofy looking fucking entrance type thing. But I get it, you know, revisiting it, the themes, the, you know, good acting, what they tried to do with the cameras and stuff. But Godzilla Minus One is where it's at. Fuck yeah, holy shit, thank you. Good writing. I mean, you might not like the story combined. Like, I could see people singing again, like, oh, it's never a good idea to have a family. And getting into the intro things with, you know, PTSD and stuff and make it a Godzilla movie. Okay, whatever. Like if I wouldn't want to watch a procedure movie or whatever. But, oh my god, Godzilla's in it. Which is this TV show now? I think this Monarch. I'm actually going to watch that and when it's all finished. I'll probably do a podcast on that. But let me wrap this up. Shin Godzilla. Okay movie. Really annoys me to a certain extent. It's a fast forward movie. Godzilla minus one. Almost perfect on every level. I need to say it again. Acting, music, cinematography, Godzilla himself, the look, the feel, the you know, the layers of characters that are fucking superficial that you care about because it's done right. No one gets too much. It's just a little bit too little. The lady next door that you hate who loves you, who loves them in the end. It just has what it needs. In abundance and just the right levels. Watch Godzilla minus one. It's a great starting point for Godzilla. I'll give it that. If you don't want to watch in Godzilla, Godzilla minus one is superb. 
And that's where I'll leave that. Wow. Thankfully, just... Whew. Godzilla. <laughs> uh, almost proud. All right, everybody. Hope your holidays were great. Look forward to hearing from you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.